Hey, welcome back. We're playing Snapships Tactics again this evening. And at this stage, we're still playtesting all the different types of ships and builds. The stock ships, which we have uh, uh, chassis cards for in the game. Uh, we're de still dealing with the Lance versus the um, Locust. Uh, but this time I've rebuilt the ships and this is the Lance. Um, it's not a scout. It's an attack craft versus the Locust close support fighter. Now, the, the loadout on this uh, Lance is, is barely different than the uh, scout ship. The one part has changed. Instead of the burst drives, we have the uh, uh, Lance thruster. That's the only different part, but we have a different chassis ability. Uh, when you perform an attack action against a target's flank, you may treat that attack as attacking from the rear instead. So rear attacks and flank attacks are the key with this Lance attack craft. Meanwhile, completely different loadout on this. You know, a few of the parts are the same, but now we've got the stealth drive, which is awesome. Uh, for this uh, Locust, you can boost evasion all the way up to six, which is the maximum with the stealth drive. It costs um, three power cubes to do that because this is a size three ship. We've got the uh, seal arm rockets with the heat seeking missiles. We've got two of those that we can launch at a time. Still got the rail gun, got the locust wings, and the locust cockpit, okay? And the passive ability on this close support fighter, when you perform an attack action against a target at range one, reduce that hit number by one. That really wants me to... Um, an attack action could be the rail gun or the rockets. Uh, but I really don't want to be at range one with this ship for reasons. Uh, but then again, I can boost evasion all the way up to six if I absolutely have to. Okay, so let's get started. The um, Lance has ten hull because of the cockpit card. It has a passive bonus there. And we do have the Lance booster that allows us to make any short maneuver, a long maneuver, if we so choose. So this thing can move two feet a turn, I think, if I wanted to. We're going to randomly select who gets to roll first. Left hand will be for the Lance, right hand for the Locust. Okay, Lance rolls a six, Locust rolls a blank. The Lance does go first. I always feel like the, the, the good guys always do go first, but that doesn't really give them that much of an advantage. So let's begin. Let me make sure that um, camera's rolling. Yeah, we're almost three minutes into this. And a quick hydration. And we're about ready to... Mm start this. There are two ice clouds. There's a Tycho's Rift, a debris cloud, and an asteroid. And very quickly, I'm going to have to refresh my memory on what the debris cloud does. I think that's two evade, or maybe just one evade. Yeah. No. On overlap, you you gain one evade for the turn. So that could help either, either one of these ships. The asteroid is going to be... The asteroid field... Uh, I'm, I'm taking the Lance that way anyway, because he's obviously going to fire off rockets as soon as he can. So, um, all right. So, uh, so we can turn short or long and turn. Okay. So what I think we'll do, I think we'll just, we won't turn. We'll go long. I'm overlapping the, uh, ice cloud, but I don't have any heat or any uh, cubes applied yet, so that doesn't help. And I think we'll turn just a little there. And now we can start doing stuff. Uh, well, I want to go ahead and boost evasion. So we'll use the Lance Thruster, two power cubes. It says short and turn and then evade, but we'll go long. Okay. And turn this way. Look how much distance I covered just in that movement. And we'll boost evasion up to four. And I can put one heat cube on the Lance booster and boost evasion up to five. And I think I will do that. I think I may be doing this every turn I'm possible. Uh, okay. Uh, here's the heat. 
I put the heat in the middle, but I know I'll bump it and knock them all into the floor, so we'll keep doing it this way. Uh, is my turn over? Well, we a range three attack on our uh, pulse lasers. Well, it's certainly not in range. No, okay. So I think this will end the uh, Lance's turn, and we can boost evasion up to five. That's where it should be. Okay. Now, I hope this doesn't go on for two hours, because there's something coming on television that I don't want to watch. So, all right. So we will go ahead, turn, and now that he's made his turn, we're going to head towards him. And this is very, very offensive, <laughs> what I'm about to do here. Okay. Turning towards the lance. Make our long maneuver, and then we can turn up to 90 degrees for two turns. I am not going to do so. Uh, well... just occurred to me, I don't have any uh, power cubes out here for the... <laughs> I thought I had everything set up. So, very quickly, I need to get six power cubes out here. One, two, three, four. Five, six. One advantage of this game over the X-Wing Miniatures game is that it, the setup for this game doesn't take as long. And neither does the teardown. Okay. So, um, well, so range two to three to fire those rockets. Okay. Okay. And the rockets are anything within a 180 degree, so anything in front of you within range two or three. All right. First thing we're going to do is put three cubes on the stealth drive. I'm going to go. A short distance forward and we're gonna boost evasion by three taking it all the way up to six okay and I think at this point we should be in range three Easily. All right, I'm going to fire off the uh, Mantis or CL Arm rockets. That's two missiles, two heat-seeking missiles. Costs one power cube and a heat. Okay. I don't have enough cubes to launch the railgun at this point, but uh, probably. Well, I, I had to get in range. So, all right. So there are two missiles in the air. Or in space, headed toward the um, the lance over here. Okay, and if these hit, boy, it sucks. It really sucks for the uh, enemy if these heat seekers hit. Okay, there is a point of order that I'm not clear on just yet. But now, are we done? I've got two more cubes, but I can only vent four per turn, so I think we'll probably cool it here. Okay, evasion six, evasion five. All right, the Lance. Uh, have to put evasion back down to three. And we'll vent all cubes here. Maybe I'll just put a supply of heat cubes over here and keep a supply of heat cubes over here. Don't you think that would be easier? I do. I have two cups. Why not? Oh, there's no sense in making things more difficult than they need to be. Okay. And now we do our movements. Turn one and then do move short. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna turn at all, but I'm gonna make a well yeah I am. Just a little. Now I'm gonna make a short movement. There. I went into the asteroids, so I get to immediately uh, roll for uh, a missile, anti-missile. Okay. So these heat seekers. Flip one of these over. There's a quality of five, so I just need to roll a five or higher, okay? I rolled a critical and a one, so I destroyed one of the missiles, okay? So, 
There's only one to deal with now. And, well, now I'm going to do the rest of my turn, though. There. Just want to make sure I'm pointing at the uh, now exposed um, uh, locust. So I definitely want to use my pulse laser. Uh, and that's a, a range one, two, or three attack. We'll put two cubes on this. Actually, guys, I better do an anti-missile check. I hate to not attack because missiles are being fired at me, but one of these missiles hitting sucks uh, because it puts it puts heat on your, uh, well, uh, let's just leave it as is. Okay. Uh, I want to damage this locust quickly. And hopefully these uh, heat-seeking missiles don't end up destroying me. Okay. Uh, so it's a 45-degree arc, range 3. We're definitely in range 3 there. We will measure it just to make absolutely certain. Okay. It's actually range 2. Okay. We're using the pulse laser. Two attack dice. Each hit does two damage. No cover. Uh, but the uh, hit number is 8. 2 plus 6, which is the current agility. So I have to roll 8 or higher for either of these to land. Nope. That's a miss. And now I'm going to uh, put one heat on the Lance Booster to improve evasion up to 4. And then I'm going to put two heat on the Lance Thruster Actually, no, I'm in the asteroid field. That would actually reduce the damage of a successful missile hit, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. But I think a successful hit does a minimum of one damage, and these will only do one damage. So I could move out of this asteroid field and be all right. Um, yeah. So soft, uh, hard cover, negative one total damage. Uh, and I'm almost positive... That missiles, missile impacts on terrain tiles. When the ship resolves missile impacts of any part of its base overlaps a terrain tile, it receives the corresponding hard or soft cover damage. However, when we look at launch actions, I think is this page, yeah. Uh, I think it does a minimum of one damage, I mean. If it hits, it hits. So, this is one of these instances where I'm going to pause the video for a moment. Well, unfortunately, I can't find a clear answer in the rule book. That doesn't mean it's not there. It's, it just means I'm not seeing it. In cases like this, I mean, this is the advice for any game. Uh, if, if you can't figure out what the correct ruling is, make a ruling. Um, uh, I don't see a way that a, a successful missile attack could do zero damage. So, I think a minimum of one, despite being in the uh, asteroid field. Uh, so, uh, where are we? Uh, I boosted... One, two. Well, yeah, I was just deciding whether I wanted to make this uh, uh, Lance Thruster straight-ahead move uh, for two cubes. I already missed with my attack. I kind of want to stay right where I am right now. Uh, and maybe make for Tycho's Rift and try to find some hard cover on the next turn. Or soft cover. That's a. Uh, I think it's time to see if I take any damage here. So, uh, hmm. Okay, I can't do this next turn, but I'm going to go ahead and do the Lance Thruster short turn, and evade. That's going to put evade up to five. It's going to make it harder to hit me, but so let's see what's the order. So movement, and I, this can be a long movement, and I think I will make it a long movement. No, I don't, because of that range one nonsense from this guy. Will I have to be a short movement? Of course, he could just move closer now and, and take, actually, I'm still overlapping the asteroid if that was the rule. 
and turn. Uh, I can turn on my next uh, chassis uh, action. Okay, I think I'm done. At any rate, now we have to reconcile the, the heat missile. So the quality or the uh, hit number is zero plus evasion, which is five, which means I have to roll a five or higher. The, uh, the locust has to roll a five or higher. Rolls a six, that's a successful impact. And it only does one damage, but it also adds a heat to the uh, scarab. And it's dealers, it's the damager's choice where this heat goes. Uh, I think we'll put a heat on the pulse laser to prevent, well, to make it more difficult to um, attack on the next round. I feel like the locust has all the tricks. Now, if you're going to argue he's overlapping an asteroid, that's no damage. Well, then what's the point of even shooting the asteroids when they're asteroid belt or shooting the missiles when there are asteroids out on I mean if you can only do one damage with the missile remaining um, this could be uh, uh, improper gameplay here I mean I don't know until I, I'm asking the de I've already uh, asked the, the develop while the video was paused I asked the developers of the game uh, what's how does this work um, is it really no damage despite the fact that it was a successful hit i mean he rolled a six he rolled higher than the um, target number that is a successful hit uh, but i don't see anywhere where it says a minimum of one damage or in, in the rule book and if it said that i'd be happy because i'd be like okay i agree with that but it doesn't say that so you could literally negate all missile damage even if you get a successful hit uh Let's think about it, and I hate to think about this on camera because I know you guys have lives you need to, to lead, and so do I. Um, okay, for the sake of argument, no, that did no damage. Okay, uh, so he didn't apply that heat either. All right. Um, so, and it, and of course, he's headed the wrong way. He won't benefit from that in the next turn. Okay, now it's the Locust's turn. So no damage was done to the to the uh, lance. Okay, let's vent, and we've got to make a choice. We can only vent four cubes. I'm gonna vent, vent the rockets. I'm not gonna give up on these rockets. So that's two, and I can take two off the stealth drive. So we won't be able to boost all the way up to uh, uh, this mate. Now we get to do. Oh, geez, this could be devastating. Uh, so turn long. And we could turn again, but I'm not going to. Well, that's certainly a range one attack. Oh, dear. Uh, uh, reduce the hit number by one. Now, the, the Lance has uh, an evade of five. But for the purposes of this railgun attack, three cubes, it has an evasion of four. So I have to roll sixes or higher, three dice, and each hit does two damage. This could be devastating. If I hit with all three of these, um, and it's line of sight. So it's a straight line right in front. And it's right on target. Um, so, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, okay. Oh, for Pete's sake, and I still got missiles to deploy. Okay, um, but I'm, yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot these missiles off every round because that's what he's gonna do. So I said the target number was four plus two, six, six, eight, critical. That's three hits for six damage. Oy, oy, is there any way to mitigate that? No. This. Lance is down to four hull that quickly. I mean, had to, can't just live in cover. I mean, oh, and there's a critical hit. So, and there's heat on one of these parts. Okay. We're going to roll and see which part gets damaged. Two. That's 
the Lance Thruster, which had two cubes on it, and it would cost two cubes to repair. So that's damaged. And you know what? I can't fire off the missiles this round, or the, of the rockets, because it has to be range two or three. Uh, I could, well, I could be very, very cheeky and use the locust wings. But I don't think the lance is going to get to attack this round anyway. Uh, so I think we're staying with an agility of three. I mean, it's, it's nine to four at this point. One more successful hit with that thing, or with missiles, and this is over. Mm. Okay. Okay. And if we have time before this is over, I'm going to alter the ships a little and see if aesthetically I, I like them more in a different configuration. I hope I can remember to do that. And I also hope I didn't forget to press record again. Yeah, we're rolling. Okay, we're almost... Oh, 21 minutes into this. Okay. So it's now the Lance's turn. So we reduce evasion back down to three. We vent. We can vent everything. And we'll do the movement. So turn, long turn. Okay, watch, watch this. We'll turn that far. And I think we'll be all right. Long. And are we touching Tycho's Rift? You know, we're touching it, but we're not overlapping it. And uh, we may miss it all together. So we're going to turn just a little. Because I do want to try to skirt the edge of that. Get a little boost. Okay. And so first thing I really want to do is repair the Lance Thruster. So that's two cubes. And this cannot be used this turn. Um... Hmm. Hmm. And that's a shame. Oh. Well, we're going to put a heat on the Lance booster. And I would do this every single turn on the Lance. Put a, key, put a heat cube on the Lance booster and boost your evasion by one point. I think it's a smart thing to do on just about every turn. So now the Lance has an evasion of four. I can't boost it any further. Can't do anything else this turn either. Uh, except a sidestep to the left or right. And honestly, I don't think I want to do that. But man, this Lance is in trouble. So much trouble. My only other movement would be the Lance Thruster. Uh, with, we just repaired that, so I can't use it. Certainly no position to fire unless... Well, hmm, hmm, let me turn this 45 just to see if he's in the firing arc if I do that. Let's see the laser is a 45 degree or he is not. Might as well put it right back where it was. Oh, zounds. Okay. Okay. That's the end of the Lance's turn. Oh. Chappies, the Lance is in trouble. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's vent what we can. Actually, we can vent everything. The rail gun, the stealth drive, and now turn, long, turn. Now, this is going to be interesting. Um... This is going to be very interesting. So, we can turn up to 90 degrees. I don't want to bump him. I don't want to run into him. So there's turn. Now we'll go long. No missiles in play. Still no missiles in play. And we'll turn up to 90 degrees here. There's 45. There's 90. Still not good enough to um, fire because yeah, the railgun is line of sight, so I will have to turn again. 
Okay, there's simply no reason to pump anything into evasion this turn. Okay. Oh man, the Locust Cockpit. I'm going to put one power cube on that and turn 45 degrees if necessary. Uh oh, and now we've got a line of sight. Rear attack on the Lance. Oh dear. Okay, well. <laughs> okay, so. How many cute, how many, uh, three dice, each hit does two damage. Okay, I have to determine the, the hit number. Let's see now, flank and rear. Negative one to hit and plus one total damage. Oh dear. Okay, so the Lance's evasion is four. So I have to roll two plus four is six, minus one is five. This could potentially end this match quickly. This is the real gun attack, Chappie. Oh, there's a critical, there's a seven, and there's an eight. That's, that's six damage right there. But let's play it out. Um, Plus one, that's actually seven damage. We got a critical. Let's see what got knocked out here. Rolled a one, so the cockpit got knocked out. And, oh, what a devastating turn of events. I mean, well, this is under half an hour. This is under half an hour. The Lance has been destroyed. It didn't have a chance. It, it didn't have a chance. It, it just has one attack, you know that, you know, can potentially do four damage. But the Scarab can boost evasion all the way up to six. Uh, and, I mean, the Lance was okay in that asteroid field, and, and we, you know, we even might have fudged the rules and didn't let that missile impact him or do any damage, even though it was a successful hit. Uh, okay. Well, I tell you what, folks, if you are a fan of the bad guys in this game, well, you're in for a treat because they are dominant. At least the uh, scarabs and the lances. We are the scarabs and the um, locusts. Uh, next time, we'll check the wasp against the uh, falcs in all three different formations. But, um, yeah. And I'm not alone in this. I've consulted with other players of this game, and a lot of people feel like, yeah, it's, it's very difficult to win a game 1v1 as one of the forge ships because th there are more scarab card or there are more complex claw cards to choose from more options and tastier uh, tricks far tastier tricks and uh, i mean i'm not saying that's a bad thing at all it's just um, it, it it it's going to require teamwork to defeat these uh, bad guys in the stock builds now i can't speak about uh, custom builds yet. Once we get through all the Falcons and Wasp, once we play a match each with all those different builds, then I'm going to design some uh, uh, some custom ships and probably uh, pit them against the AI in the game. Learn how to use those AI cards. But man, that was a quick match, and and it's over. The uh, the bad guys win again. And again, remember, folks, this is me versus me. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to bias one side or the other. I'm trying to win with both teams or both factions, but almost every match has been gone in favor of the bad guys in this game. They simply have better evasive tactics. They have better maneuverability. Maybe they're not as, I mean, you can't move around as much as the Lance, but he can turn that 45 that and plus 90 degree turn. That's devastating because that allows you to do these rear and flank attacks for a devastating amount of damage. But Hey, uh, all that said, I am really enjoying this game, and I can't wait until the uh, the next match, and that will be the stock build Falks versus the stock build Wasp. But, uh, now, I'm not sure if those are huge ships or if they're the same size as Scarabs and uh, uh, Sabres. We can actually find that out right now. Since we got all this extra time on our hands here, let's see. Okay, so... 
I'm looking for. Okay, it's a size four ship with 18 hull and eight cubes. So yeah, it, it is larger. Now let's see if the wasp does the same thing. Uh, yeah, 16 hull and eight cubes. Convince six cubes, three evasion. That's on the wasp. Uh, the uh, uh, the falx, if I can find one. There we go. It's only two evasion. So we'll look forward to that. Until then, thanks for much. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, there's one thing I said I wanted to do before we we end this match, and I'm just going to do it right now. I'm going to flip the wings around on this. I might have done this in the original review. Yeah, I like this better. I like the wings flipped around on this stock locust. This is very effective. Those are the missiles that I was deploying, of course. And But it's the railgun. The railgun did the trick. Okay? That looks so much like laser beak from the Transformers. This might be my favorite ship model right here. And I'm going to do this as well. This might be a little trickier. Uh, so I'm just going to flip this cockpit backwards. I'll be taking all these apart here in a few minutes anyway. And putting them back into their box art formation. And, you know, right away, because now we've got the engine in the back, we'd have to flip the gun around. But I kind of like this better, too. I like having the nose in front of the cockpit rather than behind it. Okay, well, that's just some, 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 some booking around I was doing. All right, pals. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Take care.